The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. At the far end of town where the cuckoo grass grows, and the wind smells low and sour when it blows, and no birds ever sing except in old crows, is the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the cuckoo grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today. Where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the wiggle grass grows? The old rustler still lives here as king. He knows. You won't see the rustler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkin on top of his door. He lurks in his lurking cold under the loop, where he makes his own clothes of, of milk muffled mousse. And on special dang midnight in August, he peeks out of the shoulders and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you perhaps if you're willing to pay. On the end of a loop, he lets down a tin pail, and you have to toss in fifteen pence and a nail, and the shell of a great 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 grandfather snail. Then he pulls up the pail and makes the most careful count, to see if he paid him all the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his loop, his secret strange hole in his globulous glove. Then he runs, I will call you by whispering my phone for the secrets I tell up for your ears alone. Slurp them, slurp the words from my phone to your ear. And the old rustlers' whispers are not very clear, since they have to come down through a snuggly hose. And he sounds as if he had smaller speeds up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says, with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still clean and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the swarmy swans rang out in space. One morning, I came to this glorious place and I saw the trees, the truffula trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffula trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees I saw brown bubble loops, frisking about in their bubble loop suits, as they played in the shade and ate truffula fruits. From the lipless pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish chumming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffula trees are my life. I'd been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tops was much softer than silk. And they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do I unloading my cart. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffula tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill and with great speedy speed, I took the soft top and I needed a sneeze. The instant I finished, I heard a gasm. I looked. I saw something pop out of the stalk of the tree I chopped down. I, it was sort of a man describe him. That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues, and I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my truffula top? Look, Laura, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I am doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a sneeze. A sneeze of find something that all people need. 
with a shirt, with a sock, with a glue, with a hat, but it has other uses. Yes, far up in that. You can use it for carpet, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers, for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, Sir, you're crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that full thing. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just at the minute, a chap came along, and he thought that the sneeze that had needed was great. He happily bought it for three ninety eight. I laughed at the Lorax, you fool stupid guy, you never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I am busy, I told him. Shut up if you please. I lushed it across the room and in no time at all, built a lady of phone, I put it a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, Listen here, here's a one of a chance for the whole Oslip family to get my dad rich. Get her over here fast. Take the load to North Snitch, turn left the wee hawking. Sharp light at South Stitch. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Oslip family was working full tilt. We were all needing sneeze just as busy as bees to the sounds of the chomping of truffle trees. Then oh baby, oh how my business did grow. Now chomping one tree at a time was too slow, so I quickly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked of four truffle trees at one smacker. We were making sneeze for time as fast as before, and the Lorax, he didn't show off anymore. But the next week he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I am the Lorax who speak for the trees, which you seem to be chomping as fast as you please. But I am also in charge of the brown bobaloots, who played in the shade in their bobaloot suits, and happily lived eating truffle fruits. Now thanks to your hacking, my tree is to go to the ground. There is not enough truffle fruit to go around. And my poor bubble roots are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried and he sent them away. I, the whistler, fast said as I watched them all go. But business is business and business must grow. They got less of crummies in tummies, you know. I meant no harm, I most truly did not, but I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I bigger my factory, I bigger my load, I bigger my wagons, I bigger my loads of the sneeds. I shipped out, I was shipping down forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went light and bigger things, selling more sneeds. And I bigger my money, which everyone needs. Then again he came back. I was fishing some pipes when an old nuisance Lorax came back with more grapes. I am the Lorax, he coughed and he whipped. He sneezed and he snuffled, he snuggled, he sniffed. Wassler, he cried with a cough of his croak. Wassler, you make such smuggle of smoke. My poor swami swans, why they can't sing a note. No one can see him with smoke in his throat. And so, said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog. You smoked up around here. What's more, snapped the Lorax, his tender was up. Let me say a few words about gloppity glop. Your machinery chunks on day and night without stop. Making gloppity glop, usher schlop de schlop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old wrestler man, you. You go up in the pond where the humming fish chomp. No more can they hum for their gills are all gone. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get awfully weary in search of some water 
that isn't so smelly. I hear things are just as bad up in Lake Erie. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yell at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap, and say bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my light, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, your Lorax, I'm be figuring and figuring and figuring and figuring and figuring, turning more trout lotteries into snails, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sickness smack of an axe and a tree. That we heard a tree fall, the very last traveler tree of them all. No more trees, no more snails, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, which one, all with me goodbye. They jumped into my car and drove away under the smoke smoker stars. Now all that was left is near the bad smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a sad, sad backward glance. As we lifted himself by the sea of his pants, and I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he hissed himself and took leave of this place, draw a hole in the smoke without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of logs with the one word on last. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago, but each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away through the years while my buildings have fallen apart. I worried about it with all of my heart. Well now, says the Wansler, now that you are here, the world of the Lorax seems perfectly clear, unless someone like you cares a whole of lot. Nothing is going to get better, it's not. So, catch, cars the Wansler, he lets something fall. It's a trifle of seed, it's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffle trees, and truffle trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffle, treat it with care, give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack, then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. Thank you for watching!